Dear friends, I'd like uh, to present to you the next speaker, Anacleta Jose Manuel, president of the Lusitania Center of Cultural Unity, Portugal, Lisbon, and tell a bit about him. Uh, born in Lisbon, Portugal, graduated from um, uh, the University in Lisbon and studied a lot, editor of journal Biosophy and president of the Cultural Center Lusitana do Unificasso, uh, where for the first time the three volumes of text by Madame Blavatsky were published, and uh, the full version of uh, The Secret Doctrine was also published the year. Um, um, a researcher of esoteric Buddhism and uh, uh, the secret books of Blavatsky by David Regal and Nancy Regal, author of over 40 books and a preface to the Portuguese edition of the Voices of Silence, commission and author of 24 panels of the exhibition dedicated to Madame Blavatsky in Lisbon 2018. Uh, documents were later reproduced in Brazil, organizing a lecture of several conf congresses, author of hundreds of lectures and hundreds of articles in theosophy, esoteric philosophy and spiritual traditions. Dear friends, um, unfortunately, uh, it happened uh, that uh, Jose um, fought a disease and uh, was working till the end. In the end of the uh, of the year, uh, he sent uh, his uh, re research for the Congress, and unfortunately by the Congress he is not with us anymore. He has left a lot of international progresses and works and opened an edifice where the, uh, the publishing house for Madame Blavatsky's works, uh, and uh, they were published around the whole world. Also published Kalachakra Tantra, in, of, translated from Russian into Portuguese. Today, uh, his research will be read out uh, by the researcher and um, the supporter and with a dedication to the real true theosophist Jose Manuel Anacleta. Uh, his report will be read by the employee of the center and tribute to the real scientists. It will be a minute's contemplation about the eternal. HPB. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon to all. Our friend Jose Manuel Anaclet left this plane of the of physical life and passed to the spiritual li spiritual light. I was asked to read his lecture, and I hope everybody understands me. Fraternal greetings to all the Theosophist gathered here. It is a great pleasure to be with you all. Yes, it is, it is always a joy to be with Theosophist from various black backgrounds and nationalities. I believe that this university enriches all of us. And in this case, with the majority being from Russia, I am reminded of the brilliant culture of this country. Today, I will speak of stanza three in general, not focusing on any particular sloka. In a way, stanza three also serves as a pretext to discuss the entire secret doctrine and all the stanzas it, it has publicly revealed. Indeed, stanza three marks the transition from the unmanifested to the emergence of a particular cosmos. It is true that the previous stanza already does this to some extent, but as Elena Blavatsky points out, the states mentioned in the first two stanzas would require an exclusive treatise to understand their differences. It is very important that Elena Blavatsky begins by referring to the absoluteness and she continues this in stanza one. Being is and cannot help be, but be 
and this awareness is immense with us, within us. However, at the same time, it is non-being, not being any particular thing, not something limited and limiting. When I was young, I was first overwhelmed by the wonder of being, then by the equally, equally astonished realization that is impossible for nothing to be. In a poor so, uh, prior summary of the stanzas, HPB wrote insignificantly, a moment's thought shows that such a state can only be symbolized. The, to describe it is impossible, nor can it be symbolized except in negatives, for since it is the state of plus, absoluteness per se, it can possess none of those specific attributes which serve us to describe objects in positive terms. Hence, that state can only be suggested by the negatives of all those most abstract attributes, which men feel rather than conceive, as the remotest limits attainable by their power of conception. The stances of Zion and the secret doctrine present a method uh, of conceiving, thinking and understanding that is exemplary and indispensable. It is the method of Diosphy and the only one possible for grasping the theory practice of all that is. Without this method, method the individual, the student or the aspiring student becomes lost in an immense and incomparable ocean of knowledge, in a forest of details. In a tangle of, of information, they lose their guiding thread, confusing the essential with the accessory, synthesis in with separatist analysis. analysis. This can never be emphasized enough. The first two stanzas wonderfully make us aware of the grand circumstances that is possible to be without existing, and not and that existence and this, its evolution depend entirely on their being vehicles of manifestation. In verse 7 of stanza 1, we can read these magnificent words. 7. The causes of existence had been done away with. The visible that was, and invisible that is, rested in eternal not being, non-being, the one being. Now, let's briefly digress into stanza 3. The last vibration of the seven eternity thrills through infinitude. The mother swells, expanding from within without, like the bud of the lotus. With the vibration of the seventh eternity, we have the emergence impulse and culmination of the first logos, the unmanifested logos, from which flows Divi Prakriti and the proto-activity of the second logos. While Parabrahman is the eternal cause, the first logos is the first cause, the great invisible logos that originates all other logoi, and before cosmic manifestation, sleeps in the bosom of that which neither sleeps nor wakes. For Parabrahman, which is not a being, but said or be as truth, cannot be said to be asleep, asleep or awake. In Sloker 4, it is stated, Then the three fall into the four, the radiant essence becomes seven inside, seven outside. Here we, say, we see something that had not yet occurred in the stage mentioned in verse 4 of stanza 3. It becomes clear that everything in the cosmos is septenary, with three higher and ideative aspects and four lower ones of expression. Nevertheless, as there is the one element, spirit mother, the septenary is both internal and external, albeit in different balances. In this light, Sloka 10 should also be understood Father, mother, Spain, a web whose upper end is fastened to spirit, the light of the one darkness, and the lower one to its shadowy. And 
matter and this web is the universe spun out of the two substances made in one, which is Svabhavat. Here, it is important to note that in Buddhism, at least in its current and external forms, Svabhavat has a single meaning, self-essence or self-nature. However, in Theosophy, it has a different meaning as present, presented by Elena Blavatsky in a posthumous but original edition of the Theosophical Grocery. Svabhavat is the substance of the world and it is its essential nature, or rather, that which is behind it, the spirit and the sense of substance. The name comes from su Subhava, and it is compounded of three words, su, su, good, perfect, beautiful, elegant, sva, self, and bhava, being or condition of being. From it, all nature proceeds, and to, and to it, it returns at the end of the cycles of life. In esotericism, it is called the father-mother. It is the plastic essence of the matter. This raises the need to take, to take a position on the fact that the majority of Buddhists, when not disinterested in the topic, deny to exist the existence of Svabhavat in each and every being adopting the position of an, an Atman, which means there is no individual self or spirit, but rather total emptiness. It is necessary to note that an intermediate position in Buddhism, considered by very balanced and close to Diosphi, was taught by instructor, instructors like Yumo Mikio Dorch, 11th century, and Dolpoka, Dolpopa uh, Sherab Gyaltsen, 14th century, of the ancient Gornampka school, the Valympic, the Shantung doctrine, empty only and of other, in opposition to Rangtong, empty toler of self identify. The, the theosophical position is as follows. Atma is used to refer to the undivided and unconditioned self beyond attributes, separations, or personal individualism, which are other in relation to true reality. It is that of the universal world itself. Ilana Blavatsky asserts in the key of Theosophy that Atman is not my spirit, nor your spirit, but like the sun. It shines upon all. It is the universally diffused divine principle, inseparable from its matter spirit, which is one, one, uh, one and, and absolute, just as the sun beam is inseparable from the sunlight. Let us remember that is in the three fundamental proposition of the secret doctrine, it is stated that no purely spiritual body, divine soul, can have an independent and a conscious existence before the spark, which emerged from the pure essence of the sixth universal principle, that is, the super soul, as one, passed through every elemental form of the phen phenomenal world of this Mavantara and second, acquired individuality first by nature impulse and then at the cost of its own uh, consciously di directed efforts regulated by its karma, ju uh, thus ascending through all the degrees. Indeed, it refers to the sixth principle, not the seventh, and the Buddhi, not Atman. In verse 12, the last one of stan stanza 3, it is written, then Svabhavat sends forward to Arden, the atom, atoms, each is a part of the web, reflecting the self-existence. Lord, like a mi mirror, each becomes in turn a world. This is another absolutely remarkable verse. It introduces the function, at least one of them, and the importance of forward. Svabhavat sends forward, as he is the messenger of cosmic ideation, 
the swift state of the gods. The hardening of atoms means their congregation, leading to greater density and therefore greater materiality. This, this occurs at all levels, following the analogy of one god, one man, one atom. In the secret, secret doctrine, there is an abundant discussion of the Mongolian term forward. For example, 1005 is entirely dedicated to it. In addition to everything that HPB expressly stated or implied, it is very valuable to equate it with the Sanskrit Daiki Prakriti, with arrows from ancient Greece, especially in the Orphic cosmogony, with Kepera and Tum from ancient Egypt, depending on the time and circumstances, elements of ancient universal wisdom have managed to prevail and serve as a reference until today. This further emphasizes the importance of multicularism and universalism, and I mentioned at the beginning, at the beginning, and understanding and living well is in culture and wisdom systems they have developed is not well help them uh, when as often happens we only know one religion and even worse only superficially without comparative knowledge to start with the example the example i know best a significant number of people simply identify themselves as christians be, uh, because it is the predominant religion in the in their country, they may not know why and uh, there uh, there without much reflection to what a particular church asserts, content with it uh, with it without further inquiry. Similar patterns can be observed with other religions. How much richness is wasted wasted in this manner? It is a pity or a waste that Christian, and sometimes even a 30 or 40 years old theosophy student, is un unaware of fundamental aspects of the great ancient religions and philosophy of India. It is truly regrettable when people identify with a religion or belief system only for cultural convenience or without a deep understanding of its meaning and underlying philosophy. This limited approach often leads to a superficial understanding and a lack of appreciation for the spiritual and philosophical riches present in various religions, religious and philosophical traditions around the world. We are by no means advocating that one should know everything but rather that one should have fundamental notions that add more tiles for the, to the mosaic. The same applies to the Taoism and Confucianism, and of course also to Zoroastrianism, Hermetic, Hermeticism, and red, the, the radiance of Pythagoreanism, Platoni, Platonism, and Neoplatonism, the Kabbalah, first Jewish, and then also Christian. The great and legitimate original sources of Christianity, both Gnosticism and Nazarene Ebionism, Sufi Islam, which with its wondrous spiritual beauties, and so on and so forth. The greater or our recognition of our culture and ways of life, the more easily we are able to understand others and make ourselves understood the more easily we will connect with other people, their cultures and their ways of being. In summary, we will be responding to Ilana Blavatsky's request. Be Tiosfis. Leave Tiosfi. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much.
much, Madame Libelia, for reading out loud uh, this uh, research by Jose Manuel Anacleto. I would like to say that uh, we've just listened to this uh, contemplation and reflection about the sacred doctrine. Uh, Jose Anacleto is now was uh, the initiator of systemic approach to the sacred doctrine. He has his own research, and uh, you've just heard how he understands the notions of the sacred doctrine. It's a true theosophist, true, true sci scientist, and uh, we're really, really grateful to him. Thank you.